It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, it's trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. I'm taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. <coughs> It starts with some beer, so you shouldn't have fear. Two garbage guys with facts, but they both still have tact. It's that time at last for the best damn podcast. It's Can Crusher Day. And welcome back to Can Crushers. Alongside me this week, because uh, a major schedule change happened prior to the show, Paul's dedicated to football because I was supposed to be somewhere else. And nonetheless, Chad's in for the whole show. Just Chad. Just Chad. That's your nickname, Chad. just Chad. Just Chad. No, I- uh, Pat Leno actually gave you, English professor gave you the guru last week. Because you're a... If you want to call it an indie or an old school, so you're like the guru of old. Maybe a historian or something. I don't know. I'm just pulling that shit now. The guru sounds good. Yeah. I I don't know about the historian, though. I don't know. Right. So the guru. (laughs) The guru of old school. What a busy weekend for wrestling. Around here, we had IWC. We had, that was Saturday night. We had Saturday night as well, NXT TakeOver. Sunday night, you had SummerSlam, Slam. Um, Raw, SmackDown, MLW, just a plethora of stuff going on. So I don't know. Let's start with, um, what did you do this weekend, Chad? Did you do anything besides wrestling? Not a lot. Worked on pools. <laughs> right. Worked on pools and made sure I had the biggest TV for the wrestling. Before we jump into wrestling, guys, don't forget uh, Can Crusher Wrestling Legacy Tournament Round 1 concludes this coming Monday, finally. that's After ra- like 10 years. <laughs> that's Round 1. <laughs> it's finally going to conclude. We'll take a day break so we have time to write up all the matchups like we normally do. And then uh, we'll be right back at it because we have... I don't want to say a game or a league or a league. A league, league. a league come in here in the near future that, uh, again, it's going to take some time. The dog's excited for it, so here we go. Um, we'll, we'll give you all the rules and everything of what's going on when we get closer to releasing it. But before we do anything, huge shout out today. It's a big birthday for somebody, right? Beautiful Bobby Eaton of the Midnight Express turned 61. Happy birthday to beautiful Bobby. Uh, his contributions to wrestling. He was Ariel before Ariel was known. Known. Um, he, you know, one of the wrestlers that could wrestle a broom and have a five star match. Yeah, he was also in on his gimmicks no matter what. You know, the Midnight Express is Bobby Eaton. That's what made him. That's where. You know, he made his money and all that. Later on in his career, he had to be a blue blood or I don't remember what the hell it was. With Steve Regal, blue bloods. Yeah, it was horrid. But he was all in. He he would just continue to do whatever needed done. And yeah, he, he's one of the greatest. Uh, didn't Didn't bitch a lot. You know, didn't have a lot of, didn't have problems with anybody backstage at, Except for Jimmy, Gar- <laughs> except for Jimmy Garvin incident and, uh, and stuff like that, we can go on into that sometime later. But uh, uh, you know, very very nice guy, very uh, low key. Doesn't talk a lot. From we seen that at the Crockett Cup. I was Cup. Just gonna say he didn't. He shakes everybody's hand and he says hi. And that's it. You know, you might get a quick a quick little one liner from him, but nothing. You don't get a story from him. You really no, don't. But he's a he's a good guy. I mean, he's he's friendly. That's just type he is. And even Cornette and Stan Lane joke about it that he was so quiet. A lot of times they wondered if he was even there. Yeah, they they really were. Hey, I'm getting excited. I know the Crockett Cup's eight months away again, but you know, 
all leading to going back to Concord, North Carolina again. We have made the agreement that we're going to wrestle cast in wrestle cat wrestle cade wrestle cade um, in Winston Salem at the end of November. So we'll be bringing this whole conglomerate down there to put some I'd like to put some shows on maybe nightly like when we get back to the hotel you know half an hour recap of what we did or something just to so people say these two jackasses are having a good time maybe we should go down there the next year it and looks, maybe Russell Cade will say here's a free something or other you two idiots and you know out, outside of you know the they have the autographs and pictures and stuff like that that's going on Friday, mostly Saturday, and a little bit Sunday. There's seven different wrestling events, cards. Not just, you know, two, three matches. We're talking full cards yeah. between those three days. Plus there's a, if you want to say a stand-up Q&A with uh, Dustin. Dustin Rhodes. Um, there's breakfast with them. There's, there's, there's all kinds of things going on. Uh, the package that, you know, we got... Two hundred and fifty dollars. It gives you twenty five, basically twenty five passes to autographs, autographs and pictures with the wrestlers. And if you look at that, that an lot. average of thirty dollars a piece. Yeah, you know it's a six hundred, seven hundred, and some dollar value right there. Plus, you get a ticket into all, all the of these events. Um, the Dustin Rhodes thing, which is. You know, they're expecting a packed house because it's going to be... Dustin Rhodes it's talking gonna, about yeah, everything. Yeah, it's going to be raw. It's going to be, pardon the pun, raw. I mean, he's it's not a pull punches type thing and no. stuff like that. There's going to be... They have it right on the website. You know, there's going to be rated R material in here. This ain't going to be for six-year-olds to come yeah. and listen to. But it looks like it... I, I mean, a hell of a line of people that they have... Um, they keep announcing, they keep announcing, they keep announcing. I just saw earlier this week, I think the Dudleys have confirmed that they're going to be there now. Yes. So, I mean, that's, if you're if you're in the Dudleys, you know, the Dudleys are going to be there. The, the big one that was announced way back ago that he doesn't come over here to do anything, Great Mood is going to be there. If, yeah. if you're a wrestling fan and that doesn't sell you, you're not a wrestling fan. See, I thought you were going to say Al Snow there first. Well, Al Snow no, is going to be there. Al Snow is going to be there. Um, I, I got Al Snow's number on speed dial. Not that I don't want to say anything bad about Al Snow because he's our buddy. But I got I got Al Snow. I'm good with that. No. <laughs> oh, my God. I just buried him. But... Uh, on OVW. Sorry, sorry, yeah, Al. I had to take. I had to take the shot. Mark was looking giddy there. I was looking giddy. I was. Uh, the people there, though, that they're having, um, unbelievable. All, all across any know, organization, any organization, they're going to be there. Um, As we know, get closer, we'll have a much more in depth um, coverage of this. We'll do maybe half an hour of it on one show. Just hey, this is what's going on. This is what you can expect from me and Chad when we're down there. So, yeah. Hey, the 250 was worth one person to see down there, Kelly Kelly. So, I'm good with yeah, that. He's done and he uh his wife is leaving him, by the way as well. Uh so we're going to jump in. Chad didn't get to talk about IWC. We'll let him broach some of that. We'll talk about NXT takeover here and we'll roll right into MLW. We'll touch on SummerSlam. We got Raw and SmackDown. Uh, well, this show is going to be literally across the board today. Uh, time constraints, none today, because that's just the way it is. So let's start with IWC. You said you were watching both. We were at IWC, and did you see the Jimmy Nuts returned? I just want to show you, tell you, that's the biggest thing that happened on... No, I'm. It, to me it was the biggest thing. I will still tell everybody, if you haven't listened to the recap, go back and listen to it. We break down all the matches, and you actually get to hear me push kids over to be the first one to give Jimmy Nuts a high five. I've seen his return. I not real, wasn't real familiar with his, you know, his work, but I knew the name and that. Um, I mean, the place, the place went nuts. And, you know, when he's coming out and he's going to slap around Dylan Balsack, I mean Bostick, then it's all good. Yeah. It's all good at that point. Um, but the crowd just looked, you could just see the faces um, when he was out there and they were shooting around to the crowd and that. There was a lot of people happy. I mean, this wasn't 
uh, return, you know, of, oh, he's been gone three, four months or something like that. It had been three, three and a half years, three and a half years uh, three and a half since he'd been there. We do have a scheduled sit down with Jimmy to talk about from injury when he left IWC to return last Saturday. So that's coming in the near future. Uh, the English professor and I will sit down with him and just blow the roof off of what Jimmy has been doing to get back into this. And uh, some kind words from Jimmy. Also returning was Jack Pollock, who was returning from knee, back, elbow, head, shoulders, knees, and toes type of, you know, he was just he beat was, he, was, he was returning from head to toe injuries. Um he looked. He looked good. I mean, from what I could see, he looked great on the thing. He looked like he put on a few pounds. Looked a little bit, a little bit stockier than he did when he left. Um, you could tell he was hurting when he left before and that. Yep. Um, he looked. He looked solid. And you know, another one. He smacked the hell out of Argos. So that's a good thing too. Right. So you're two for two all of a sudden. <laughs> But these two met in the back as well. I wouldn't doubt if these two, uh, as they're heading towards that heavyweight championship run that both will have in the near future, that their cross, their cross path. Their path will cross. cross. Yes. I haven't even drank today. But, right. They, they will meet at some point, and IWC just keeps growing. Um, if you haven't noticed, uh, us and the IWC now tech people, the camera people and everything, uh, are bantering back and forth a little bit, the media guys, and uh, we're pulling punches at them. They didn't. They sent me some video. They really don't just shoot the ropes. Like I said, that they might just be there shooting the ropes. They, they do a good show when uh, they're publicizing everything. I just can't get words out today. You saw the event as a camera work five star, right? Yeah, definitely. We would I mean, six they beers, six beers out of six, right? I'd say six, definitely. They uh, they just seem to cover everything. They don't lock onto one position. Um, it seems like they're really in place when they need to be. Like they're taking the right shot when they need to be. I don't see a lot of stuff missed or anything missed so far in the events that I've watched with them. And you know, not to downgrade others that have shot and stuff like that but you get in a fixed position you miss stuff you don't know what's going on you miss stuff you gotta be on your toes and they just it, it just seems they're on it they're really on it and the quality um has improved i think this is their third yeah third running with the internet pay-per-view um a lot better this time versus you know the first one um just it just looks good and this is something my my nephew missed the thing because of family uh, concerns, and they had the event by noon the next day on the video the website website the IPP, to watch yeah. that's already. amazing already and they they had to have stayed up edited all night and dropped it for something like that. But that just shows the the improvement, the the, the fortitude they have to, uh, along with IWC, they're growing together. And Justin told us in an interview a while back that I, I use this all the time, and I don't mean to pound a dead horse, but this next eighteen months, now we're on fifteen because he's three months in. He's all in. He's he's pushed his whole hand in, and it's make or break. And right now. He's getting a hell of a return because it's making a lot, in my mind, because just the changes for IWC and the video company are amazing. Right. They really they're, just, are. They're, they're pulling together, and they're not that it was bad, a bad production before or anything. It was a good production, but they're getting, they're getting higher tech, you know, more consistent, better quality. With everything, and what that's going to do is when they try to bring, you know, guys in or guys are looking to sign and stuff like that, well, are we going to go through to somebody who's, you know, looking like they're shooting from their backyard, or are we going to go somebody that has the eye pay per view going on, that has a monthly show, that has this quality? They're, they're making their name in the independent wrestling scene, and they're climbing up to the higher ends of it. 
Yeah, they really are. Uh, quick, since we did the recap, what else did you see that really caught your eye at the at the pay-per-view? I'll tell you the one thing that's shocked the living you know out of me. What you can out say of me. shit. Shit, shit okay. out of me <laughs> was uh, Calvin Couture turning on Katie Arquette. Um, I thought it was odd that Katie was going against... Uh, I forget what her Ray name Lynn. Well, Ray Lynn. Well, first it was Danny, remember? First, yeah, and there was an attack, I believe. I yep. missed this part. And then so Ray Lynn is in there. Um, and I thought that was kind of odd, but I, like I said, I missed the attack. But then Couture gets in when the referee's distracted, and it looks like he's going to co-cock Ray Lynn, and he turns around and just levels Katie with the belt. And I was like, what in the hell? Coerce. Ray Lynn wins, wins the belt, and it's review or revealed uh, by Justin Labar that this had supposedly been in the works for a year. You know, he had to go and spend Christmas with Katie Arquette and her he didn't crappy family and everything, and it was just, uh, it, it surprised me. I was like, wow, um, they're going a different direction here. And I was kind of... I say what caught me off guard about it, too, is Dylan Bostick and uh, Ray Lynn are recently divorced. Yeah. And they're going to be, they're featuring both of them quite often. And I just thought that, okay, you know, professionals are professionals, but that's still got to be a little bit of a awkward situation. Yeah. Well, that's um, the whole Kurt Angle, Jeff Jarrett, uh, Karen Angle, Angle. Yeah, well, that's Jeff Jarrett's way of doing life, but um, yeah, that was just it was just weird. But I mean, overall, it was a, a good show. You had uh, Chris Larusso didn't show up. Um, that's a bonus. That's yeah, that's always a bonus there. Um, Andrew Palace coming out to help. Um, oh. Johnny Patch. Johnny Patch, sorry. Um, Holy moly. <laughs> I, I wasn't prepared for IWC today. Um, coming out and helping uh, Johnny Patch after Gory. Inadvertently. Inadvert, supposedly inadvertently threw fire and knocked him off the cage, even though they won the match. Um, I'll, uh, the other thing just reminded me. Never, if you guys haven't seen the video of it, you got to look at it. Johnny Patch, shooting star press. It's on the old Facebook. Into a drop kick. It's a coast, coast to coast. coast. Right. And he didn't miss. I mean, he hit it and hit it well. You got to look that up. Um, this dude is, if he avoids injuries and stuff like that, he could be a big player. In any organization. In any organization that will let him. Right. Right. Uh, guys, I want to touch on the media real quick. I keep saying the media company, the media company. I want to actually give them their prop. It's 2-2-1. Two, two, the number 2, T-O-1, Media LLC. Guys, give them a follow. They're great. Uh, watch their work in IWC. Uh, if you want any more IWC recap, head back to the last uh, show that we did on Sunday, and you'll be able to listen to that. I have yet to watch, and that was actually part of my off day today, to watch uh, NXT TakeOver and talk about it, but that'll get have to be moved or whatever. But Chad can give you a brief summary of Adam Cole stealing the show. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there just was no, there, there was no doubt about it. The, the match, the go-to match, it was going to break the show, was Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano in a two or three falls match. And this is continuing off of... The other two or three falls they had where Adam Cole was uh, pissed because he won the first fall and then Gargano won two. And it, they were just playing it. This was a fitting end to their series. Um, really made sense. You had Johnny Gargano in the first fall snapped and waffled to piss out of Adam Cole, got disqualified. So Adam Cole's up one nothing. Then you get... Uh, Gargano gets Cole to tap out. Second fall, tied 1-1. Steel cage is lowered over the ring and has... Toys. Toys (laughs) of all types. 
stuck in the cage, everything like that. They beat the hell out of each other. They did, if you want to say the extreme, but they didn't oversell They it. didn't oversell it. They didn't overdo it. It it was something that just fit with their feud, is the easiest way to put it. And the ending up on the top of the freaking cage, two uh, tables laying out, and Gargano suplex Cole backwards, and Cole landed on top of them. They went through the tables, acting both knocked out, but Cole's on top of them with an arm, and Cole gets the pin. I don't have to watch it now. No, if you didn't watch it, head over to the WWE Network. It's on there. Watch it. And before we started hitting the record button, the rest of the matches, three and a half star or better. You said this was an amazing pay-per-view. And NXT always is. Every every match was good. Um, you know, the ang- any angles were played. Um, to me, the only match I would say, eh, if, if you had to say... Best to worst, I I didn't care for the three way for the uh, North American title. It just they just didn't seem to fit real well. But the action was good in it, and that was that was my only complaint with it. Nice. Uh, like I said, I'll go back and watch that later on today. As this is all I'm doing: podcast and drinking beer. That's that's my day today. I don't even care about my grass. I'm gonna buy a goat. Uh, let's transition over into the Guru's uh, number one thing, MLW. MLW, I watched it again last night, and not a bad show, not a great show. Another kind of like middle of the road show is we have going on now. Back to back weeks is where, let me stop and say, I don't think you want middle of the roads back to back. I don't care if we have three hot shows. Even a dead show can be thrown in there, and maybe this is a dead show. We just don't think it is. You know, I don't. You know where I'm going? Yeah, it's just it's it's an okay show. I mean, it's worth watching to keep up on everything, but it wasn't anything overly special. But you brought up a point last week when we were talking about last week's show, kind of being the same way. Are they kind of scaling back a little bit before they go into their pay per view because they're going to go, you know, pardon the pun, all out on their pay per view? Um, AEW is so smart for putting those two uh, boards together, all in and all out, because every wrestling show uses them. Just saying. <laughs> but are they, are they doing something like that? Or are they just going to, you know, hey, let's scale back, keep people from getting, you know, Possibly injured? Injured. Yeah. injured. Unfortunately, there was an injury, which we'll go into um, in a few. But I just think they maybe, like you said, they're scaling back. They're kind of saving their energy, and then when they get this big show, then they're just going to blow people's minds. I think, they're good. I think, as we were saying that last week, I I might have misspoke once. Uh, there's a huge show in Dallas. War Chambers, War Games, whatever they're calling it. It's the exact same that War Games was. It's the exact same. They just can't use War Games. So it's right. Chamber of War. One of those ways that it's talked about. This is going to be great. I hope they put this on, and it's not just like a a show just in Dallas. Because this War Chambers match is setting up to be awesome. I think something big is going to happen then to it, which leads us into November. But we're a month away from that. More will come. More on that later, as I always say. So the show starts off with Bestia 666. The first time I saw him, because we were so hyped to see who this guy was, I was like, eh. Yeah. But I watched him again. I love him. I I love him. I really do. I, I love everything about him and what he has to do. I, I had no idea who he was wrestling. Uh, Hortus. Ray Horus. Yeah. yeah. It's Ray um, Mysterio's cousin. He, uh, Bestia, he's, he's a big guy. He reminds me size-wise of... Just a little bit below the Godfather, but he has—he's got good athletic ability. Oh yeah, he's very, very smooth with his moves. And you know, for bigger guys, you don't—you don't see a ton of that these days. And he's still um, a lucha, you know, Eric quotes. Yeah. He's still a lucha guy. Yeah, but he's 
they had, you know, it was, I want I don't want to say a squash match. Um, Horace kind of, I want to say hit and run, hit and run, hit and run. And then Bestia caught him on the corner, gave him a muscle buster, match was over. That quick. That, it, it was just done. Uh, kind of like, holy cow, he caught him and just squashed him. But then when you kind of think about it, it made sense. Hit and run, hit and run. What's going to happen if the little guy gets caught? Well, he's done. He's the done. The little guy's caught. He's <laughs> a, I, I see him being a huge... I mean, he's already a huge player because he's uh, attached with Serena and everything. But I see him being a huge player once maybe like the Von Eriks and the Contra get done with whatever they're doing. I see him trickling up there maybe towards Hammerstone. Oh, you know, something. I He needs a belt. He doesn't need a belt. I just want him to have a belt because I like him that much. Patience, patience. I don't he will, have that. <laughs> he he will get there. I I just let's let's have him come up the way he is now, because you know you give somebody a, a push right off the bat when they come in, huge crush crushing and you get Roman major Reigns. talent. Then yeah, then you get you get Roman Reigns. Whoa. Um, Whoa. that's one Roman Reigns in the garbage today. So after this match. The the goddess of MLW Selena, who again looked awesome. Yeah. Um, you, if you I figure if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna get divorced, I might as well just say it all. So yeah. If uh, you don't follow her on Instagram, get on Instagram. Uh, okay. <laughs> but um, so Selena's standing in the ring and she calls out Conan, calls him little you know little bitch, saying that he should. You know, return her phone, like he said. And so he comes, Conan comes out and he says, Hey, I seen this on your phone. And he said, You're getting you're getting money from signing Savio Vega and he doesn't know about it. And the look on her face, she played it well. She was like, you know, oh shit. And uh here comes Savio Vega. He comes out, standing on stage, just has the look and Tears up the contract, and it just, you were like, okay, Savio's going to be a bit of a player. He's still a hell of a support. Right. Um, You know, can still get around in the ring and everything like that. So you're kind of seeing they're still slowly developing this thing with Conan. I think that there's there's something more big that's going to be pulled with this, but they're developing a feud slowly. They're not going to the end-all blood feud cage death match you know, it's their, it's their first match or whatever. Right, and it's last week Conan said, hey, I want the match between Jimmy Havoc and La Parca. And she said, eh, well, maybe. Well, it's scheduled now next week, which I'm excited for. It, you right. know, again, it's just keeping a storyline going. As we, when we were <coughs> younger, the storylines lasted forever, and this is perfect. This is just where we want it to go. Okay. I wasn't sure. Um, <laughs> the next part, Mark's guys come out. The dynasty, they're, you know, pushing each other up, admiring their gold run with all their titles. And MJF gives them all gold Rolex Rolexes. watches. You know, they're playing all the huggy game and everything like that. And they start to make fun of Teddy Hart. Yeah, they brought up the whole drug situation again. I really don't like this aspect of this. I, I'm not big into drugs, first of all, but just to keep the whole drug, drug, drug thing, it's not. It doesn't look good for Teddy. No, Storyline or not, it it doesn't. And where <clears throat> where I'm kind of thinking it, it again, I'm not seeing anything anywhere about it. So it's kind of like okay, they're going to bring up something crappy like that. They're gonna run with it because he's not, he's not appearing, stuff like that. I think what they're doing it, uh, it's a bit on the tasteless side, but you know, unfortunately, that is a part of wrestling. So, uh, kind of anything goes, I guess, especially as as heels. So what they're, I think they're doing it to really something's gonna happen with them. In the hearts. It's going to be a huge match. Somebody's going to come in. The hearts are going to bring somebody huge. Maybe it's like we talked. Brian Pillman Jr. turns on the hearts and goes with them or something like that. But again, goes right back to what they're developing the storylines. 
if you got questions about what's going on, where's it going, everything like that, you you keep watching. You're yep. intrigued. If you don't, oh, Brock Lesnar's wrestling your mom, you know, whatever Roman Roman Reigns or something like that. Okay, there's not a lot you can go with on that. With this, you don't know what the hell's going to happen. Intrigue. Intrigue is where it's at. But we do get a hard response. And I thought this was stupid. Yeah. I really, this was probably the worst part of MLW. I, it didn't answer anything that was being addressed from Dynasty. It, They were play fighting in a hotel. They were just showing a cat. A cat had another cat's nose in its ass. I, yeah, it didn't. Uh, not not what you would have expected from any of it from MLW or the uh, Hearts or anything like that. It just was weird. And what was bad about it, really bad about it for me, is I got that they were taking a jab, friendly jab at Natalia in her little cat fetish and stuff like that. Oh, I didn't even look at it that way. And that that that's what I got out of it right away. And I was like, what the hell? And okay, whatever. It's done. Wow. Uh, we actually get to find out the fourth member of Contra, what his name is, and go ahead and butcher it. Oh, now I got to, I wrote it down so I could pronounce the damn thing. A Bureau Kwan. That's what I got. Um, this was, as we suspected from last week, the person who come down and threw some substance in Marshall Von Eric's eyes, and they're playing the blind angle and... You know, Marshall's back in Texas. Hawaii. Um, or Hawaii, Hawaii, sorry. Yeah, said... So f- familiar with them being in Texas. Right. Um, back in Hawaii, he's, you know, is he going to be able to see the birth of his son? You know, they're playing up that angle. Um, and Lawler says he's ready for a war. And that was it. That was that, that, that was their answer. That, that yeah, that was, that was it. Uh, Ross Von Erich gave an update. Said he's still having problems. Marshall's still having problems seeing. I still say this is gonna. This is in some way, shape, or form gonna bring their dad into this. Yep. So he said that last week. I I still see that coming. Whether I don't know how active he could be or they would use him, but I still say they're bringing him back into it. Yeah, I do too. I, at least for a one-off, I, I think it makes sense. It really does. It gives them another tick. On the old uh, ratings thing. And that's what everybody wants. That's what we want. Like, <laughs> like, share, comment. Come on, keep doing that. guy. No, sorry. <laughs> um, then we get our boy Mance Warner, who I love Mance. Uh, I love Mance. And he, they asked uh, what his game plan was. So he drew some trees and, and he got out a chainsaw. <laughs> Yeah, he's basically, he's ready for war, and he's going to cut every one of the SOBs down, I think is about the exact way that he put it. Um, yeah, a little, yeah. little different. It was definitely a lot better than the you know, last two little angles they had on there. Um, but he, did, he played it well. And there's something with him that uh, come up over the weekend, totally off the shoot of MLW. But evidently over the weekend... He was doing a, I guess, spot show for some quote unquote outlaw mud group. Um, Jim Cornette reference, by the way, folks. Yeah, copyright. Um, and, you know, like 40 people or something like that. And he did a bump for the invisible man. Ugh. Now, like, literally, nobody was in the ring. Not somebody wrapped up, you know, like the invisible man from years ago or whatever in bandages. But um, he did a bump, and by a bump, not like he tripped or fell backwards. No, he put himself through a table Ah. from a spear. He has caught so much crap on Twitter and the internet and stuff, you know, other forms of the internet about it. Um, MLW is not answering questions about it good they shouldn't um they're not saying anything about it so you're kind of wondering did he did he kind of cut his you know own privates off by doing something like that you know with the people without the consent of the people that he was uh 
he signed with. But developing situation. This obviously happened after the taping and that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't read any about that. That's that, And this is why you're the guru. The guru <laughs> brings us something we need to know. And when they, I want to see him back in the ring against one of... You know, Serena's guys. Is it going to happen soon? You know, who is the number one guy that he gets? To, because he took Bestie out, right? Yeah. Um, you did, They're just playing it. You don't know. You think, I, I have a maybe a suspicion that um, her and her gentlemen are going to be beating the hell out of somebody. And he's going to come down to help them. I see him turning and going with her. I I don't know why. I just have that inkling that he is going to come down, help out a good guy that they're beating up, and then all of a sudden turn around and beat the hell out of the guy himself. Oh. Just a, just a gut feeling, weird feeling about it. Next matchup on the docket is a Contra, Samuel and Gotch against Jay Sky and Ariel Dominguez, and the match lasted as long as the introduction of this. The one notable thing I think they, they just pushed with this match was um, how nasty and violent Contra is. They took a spike and forced it well into Dominguez's mouth. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, it's a half an inch barely past his lips. No, they had it crammed in And then there. they fish hooked it and as yeah. well. Uh, so there, I think they're building up okay, at what length are these guys going to go to take out their opposition, you know, their matches, their violence? So I think it's all all building up to the Dallas show. Yeah, you're right. At, the, at this point. And then the main event of the card was Alexander Hamilstone, and the dynasty came out. I was missing Ariel, though. She did yeah. not come out. I was mad about that. Against Savio Vega, Vega. Um, for the national open weight title, and first off, Vega looks good. I was gonna say this back then, but Vega still looks good. He has he's wrestled. He's a Caribbean champion or whatever. I also won the IWC championship uh, right after Pat Patterson did one time down in the Caribbean too. <laughs> but nonetheless, more on that later. Um, but Vega looks good. I hope he is a uh, around MLW because he can teach these younger cats. Very much, you know, an uh, instructor role. He, you know, I remember when he was in, uh, what was it? I guess it was still TNA at the time, um, you know, as a booker and stuff like that. I think that's where he could really, really help develop. And as a legend, get a little bit of a, you know, he. I don't think he's going to go title-wise, put a title on him or anything like that. But he's somebody that can help these younger guys develop. He's somebody that can make them look good in a match and he did in this match the way they the way they had it booked it was a typical numbers match with uh mjf and all those every time savio would, you know kind of get going they'd do something grab hold of his ankle distract the referee blah 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 you knew that's what they were building you know as and then finally um hammerstone Won the match after uh, interference, of course. Of all of them. Of all of them. Um, the one thing to take out of this match on the concern side, I should say, is that Savio was uh, helped to the back by uh, members of the crew, and he is legit injured. Um, can't find anything about what it is, but it was he was legitimately injured. The move that Hammerstone... Um, hit him with it looked I mean he hit it well it looked like it looked like a million bucks but it looked violent as hell so we don't know you know best wishes that he's not you know hurt uh, too bad or anything like that but it did look it looked bad it, it looked rough it really did so all in all uh, like we said a, a good one again continuing the storylines down the line so MLW. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're, you know, throwing a bunch of great episodes out there, then some subpar ones. Then they're going to, I think they're going to build up, like we've been saying, they're going to build up to that show in Dallas. 
and I think that show is going to be huge. I think it's going to be because there's not uh, in the Dallas area in that there's not a uh, territory Any wrestling, more. so to speak, or anything like that. And well, you're bringing the Von Erichs back. The Von, That's the Von, enough. Yeah, the Von the Von Erich name, even though with everything that went on, and when you found out the truth about a lot of you know a lot of the stuff that went on, Kevin was always the consistent one, never into the trouble. He was the older brother. He's seen, you know, so much heartache with that family. Um, you're, you're surprised that he's even in with the wrestling and especially that his sons are. But I think it's just going to be a huge card. I think they're going to be packed. I do too. All right, OVW report coming up. Chad will be back and we'll talk about SummerSlam, Raw, SmackDown. You know those last two are going to go quick. And then who else knows where this is going? But it's time for the OVW report. It's OVW 1043, continuing to break records. OVW. Guys, uh, stop for a minute and let me tell you, it's time for you guys to get your subscription to OVW Network. It's $4.99 a month. It really is. It's If you're up here in our neck of the woods, it's two beers. If you're in a city or whatever, it's a beer and a half or maybe one beer, depending on what you're drinking. That's the way that we judge stuff, how much it costs per beer. But it's $4.99 a month. You're going to be able to go back and watch all the old shows. You're going to be able to watch all the SNSs. You're going to be able to watch anything. They're going to add extra content that isn't available on cable TV or public TV or whatever TV. It's only going to be available on the OVW network, like the Combine, stuff like that. All of that is always available. Uh, start it, stop it, watch it, rewatch it, continue to watch it, watch it as you're driving. Don't watch it as you're driving. Come on, let's be smart about this. But it's $4.99 a month, and you get all the OVW content that we've been talking about, and it's amazing. It really is, guys. It's an action-packed show from start to beginning. If you're watching it on... YouTube, which that's going to be coming to an end pretty soon, I think. Uh, I'm not saying for sure, but I would imagine when you know everything just blossoms on the network, it's going to be cut off because it's it's their rights. It's on their network. Uh, just just watch it. Watch it. Four ninety nine a month on the network, and you get all this stuff. It, it's amazing. Um, Brian Kennison and his guys are just blowing everything up social media wise. The talent in the ring just keeps working hard. They're great. Um, you've seen it when I go down to Kentucky and I talk with them or I have them on Can Crusher Spotlight. They're great kids. They're great gals. They're you know however you want to say it. They're fun. They're this is their passion. You know their passion is the in the ring stuff. Our passion is the out of the ring, bringing you nonsense like this and bringing you who they are and getting to know them more, following them on their path. And that's what that's what OVW is about. And Al Snow and Chad Miller have taken this and just ran with it. And speaking of that, next huge event is September 11th and it's going to blow everything out of the water. Um, Gilbert starts the show by announcing that there's a $100,000 ladder match. Do you see the briefcase with the $100,000 sitting in it and this beast man holding the money, not letting anybody get close to it? So, yeah, that match in itself. And the the participants will be announced. As we trickle into the weeks, you'll find out who's going to be in it. So, to win that, that's that's a life-changing event for anyone down at OVW. Maybe I can get my name in in the hat to at least, uh, I don't know, be like James Ellsworth. Run up there and grab it and run away or something. I, I don't know. But the show itself uh, starts off and we have a match. Um, DL3 is taken on Mr. Marvelous. And out with DL3 is Shiloh, and and you see that they're still not on the same page. They're really not. Marvelous brings out Miss Marvelous and his amazing entrance, and the L3 actually stood with them for a while. You know, there's some fighting involved instead of Mr. Marvelous coming in and just beating the hell out of everybody. But Marvelous gets this an easy win. He hits the the Marvelous Russian leg and sweep and done. Uh, after the match, you, you see Miss Marvelous come back in, they pose, and we're on to the next thing. 
Randall Floyd comes out and he's got an issue. And Randall Floyd got an issue with uh, last week's guest on Can't Crush Your Spotlight, Dustin Jackson, as you heard him stirring the pot a little bit during his spotlight. And Dustin says just pretty much the same thing, that Randall can't wrestle. He... He can't wrestle with Dustin, and it's just, guys, if you have went back and watched some of these matches, this is probably one of the hottest feuds right now in OVW because, you know, I'll I'll tell them both if they're sitting at the table right now with me that they're so similar. They know how to read each other. They know what's going on. Uh, Catches can match. It's just a great work between these two, and... Dustin calls Randall the golden boy, saying that, you know, Rip Rogers was all about Randall from the get when he got into OVW. And they they go face-to-face, and there's a little bit of a scuffle. So this is going to continue. This is going to be one of the premier matches, I believe, uh, on September 11th, if it's going that way, because who knows where this could go. Because September 11th, at the 4th Street Live, anything can happen. You can expect the unexpected. Uh, I'll put it that way. Um, the entourage now backstage having some words, and they finally found out that the, they're dating the same girl. They were both dating Thunder Kitty, and they just walk away. They're, they're really upset at each other, but in the background, you see Hip Hop Vivi come out of the locker room, and then Meg goes in that locker room seconds later, and it is destroyed. So two type of segments happen right there. You're seeing uh, a rift between the entourage as, you know, a woman is coming between two dudes, two guys. And then uh, in the back, you know, you see Meg just seeing all her stuff in shambles. Hip Hop Phoebe is not done with her. She said that at the last SNS. Lutz comes out with Cove and he's going to take on Jacob Black. Jacob Black. I don't know much about him. I don't know if he's uh, just trickled in since the last time I've been down to Kentucky, but he is there, and he uh, he's given Lutz a match, and Lutz has been lucky. You know, he's held the TV title uh, right place at the right time. Gilbert even said it, right place at the right time, right opportunity. He fell asleep on the wrong person, whatever. However you want to look at it, Lutz has uh, lucked his way into a championship or two. But during the match... From out of nowhere, not behind the curtain, but a a garage door or a side door, or just boom, here comes Madman Fulton from OVE. Yes, folks, OVE, which is in Impact Wrestling. If you listen, you know there's a partnership, but usually it's the other way, where OVW is sending somebody up to Impact to get, like you want to say, a tryout with my air quotes or, you know, Callie's been up there, and you, you just you're giving them the spotlight. Well, OVV, OVE say that between OVW a couple times, and Mark's gonna need to drink heavily because OVE, OVW, OVE, OVW. Nonetheless, um, OVE is coming back to Davis Arena. Uh, it, it's been months since we saw Sammy Callahan and OVE, but after. Fulton lays waste to everybody. He grabs the mic and says, he's coming, and leaves. Well, that just, Gilbert is beside himself. He doesn't know who, when, what, where, how, how many, nothing. Uh, And what does that mean? Is OVE coming to take on OBW once again? Um, Are are we going to need forces to align to get rid of you know, the madman and possibly Callahan, possibly who, whoever else in OVE wants to come down. I don't know. That's a situation we have to continue to watch. And, folks, if you're in Kentucky tonight, head over to Davis Arena and maybe you could uh, give me a phone call and say, hey, this is what happened. And it's unbelievable. I know I'll have one person in the form of Ryan Mosley down there. He'll be able to send me some back. And... If I could trust him, Daniel Spencer, but, you know, he's always in the ring missing this, that, or the other. So it's time for the TV gauntlet, and the names in this TV gauntlet, I'm like, wow, there's going to be there's gonna be a change. I really think there's going to be a change. Dimes starts against Nigel, and Dimes makes it quick. Boom, Dimes is on a streak right now that is just hot, 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 hot. And then he gets rid of Nigel. 
Chase is right back in, beating on him as well. And then Nigel gets up from being stunned back in, and Dimes hits a changemaker on both of them, pins Chase out the door, they're both gone. But then it changes real quick. The current champ, Jay Bradley, the best heavyweight in the world, the best TV heavyweight in the world, however you want to call him, is back in this. And... um, Sorry, Dimes, he lays waste to you quickly. Boomstick, boom, you're over. See you later. Next out is Sam Thompson. Ducky, 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 shucky, quack, quack. Boom, here out the door as well because the boomstick is hit again. And then comes out Maximus Khan. Uh, We're missing the other half of King's Ransom. You know, just a lot's going on with them. But Maximus comes out. And Jay, this is a brutal fight between the both of them. It really is. But out of nowhere... Josh Ashcraft gets up on the apron, then Isaiah comes out, then Cash Flow, then Zoe gets involved. Daniel Spencer is fascinated with the new lights that Tommy had just put up recently. So he's looking around at the lights. And Bradley gets the win, gets out, and boom, it's over. Just like that. Then uh, the legacy of brutality gets on the mic, and Zoe gives him their time, and he pretty much says, hey, this is why I joined these guys. This is my family, with the air quotes. They have been there. You know, I've been dancing for the last couple years for you fans, and you haven't done anything for me. He, he had the TV title for a little bit, but now he's back in the picture. Guys, Ashcraft has brought these malicious men back together, and OVW... OVW is now under siege from the Legacy of Brutality and OVE. Uh, We need the likes of Randall Floyd and Dustin Jackson to put their differences aside right now and step up and lay waste to them and get dimes in the help. And, you know, just calling all help for OVW to save grace. Uh, Corey Storms won the could come aside and maybe if uh, the Trinidad Titan Justin Smooth but we need to protect OVW right now and with it being under siege from a legacy of brutality and OVE Al Snow better better watch out it really it's going crazy down there and um, Davis Arena could implode with sorry the pun the brutality that is coming to OVW uh Final segment, Gilbert comes out and he talks with the commissioner, Dean Hill. And Dean Hill has two big announcements. One is he talks about fight for freedom. He talks about the, everything that's going to be going on. And we'll get into that with more detail. We'll, uh, we'll bring in Chad or Al to talk about this historic event that's going to happen. And on top, on top of that, he also announces that October 1st, OVW will be going back live on Tuesday nights. So that's a huge, huge turn as now they're going to own Tuesday nights uh, compared to what everything is going on on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays and who knows when. OVW shifting to go to Tuesday nights and that's going to be huge. It really is. Have it on public down there, on the network up here, wherever you're at. OVW is going to own Tuesdays. And then... He announces two huge guests that are going to be at the September 11th Fight for Freedom. People that know OVW Wrestling. Hall of Famers that have fought in Louisville, in Kentucky, have paved the wave for other tag teams. And this tag team made it into the WWE Hall of Fame without ever being in the WWE. Yes, it's that tag team. It is the Rock and Roll Express. Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson are going to be at the September 11th show, Fight for Freedom, on 4th Street in Louisville, Kentucky. 4th Street Live. Justin Smooth then breaks up all this happiness and says, nobody wants to see the Rock and Roll Express. Nobody wants to see Dean Hill. Nobody cares about Dale Gilbert. Da, 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 da. Everybody only cares about the OBW Heavyweight Champion, Justin Smooth, and then boom, Category 5, Corey Storm comes out, and they get to talking, but Dean says, hey, I got one more thing. After watching everything that happened at the last SNS, you know, at one point, Corey was champion, but the foot was on the ropes, so that Daniel missed. 
So we had it return into the match. And then as Justin Smooth made the pin that Daniel missed, his half of his lower body was outside the ring. But Daniel still made the count. One, two, three. So Daniel needs to be talked to. Let's just talk about that. Daniel, the referee. He, he needs a talking to and uh, maybe head back to ref school. Get Be more aware. Don't look at the lights. Make sure you're looking at your surroundings and look for shoulders and stuff like that. But Dean Hill says... On September 11th, Fight for Freedom, it will be Justin Smooth, Corey Storm, Part 2. Yes, that's Part 2. He's getting his return match because legitimately he should not have lost that match because Justin Smooth was outside the ring. Guys, a lot is going on with OVW. You hear the Can Crusher spotlights uh, with a lot of OVW stars. There's going to be some more non-OVW stars coming up as well, but it, it's OVW heavy, and there's a lot going on at OVW. And again, $4.99 a month, you get the network. Coming up next, after a break, first of all, the break's going to be from our great sponsor, Collar and Elbow. You're going to hear Al talk about it and how great it is, and I will promote the show's the shirts at the end of the show, and I'm just so excited all the time when I talk OVW. After the break, Chad joins me back, and we talk about uh, SummerSlam, Raw, SmackDown, and anything else. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hey, this is Drew Hernandez, the Mayan Mauler, the hard-hearted Hispanic. And tune in, you're listening to the Can Crushers podcast. So how many hours did you sit and watch SummerSlam? I turned it on when the actual pay-per-view started at 7 o'clock. I didn't watch any of the pre-show. I know what was going on. I don't... I don't need to have it recap by eight right. different announced teams and twenty-seven seven different, different times. languages. Um, just walk, kind of watched it from the beginning. I turned it on fifteen minutes prior, so the iconics, <coughs> the iconics, uh, lost to Bliss and Cross for the tag team championships. But prior to that, we saw Buddy Murphy get decimated by Rowan. Is this is all being read? And there was one more match that I I just don't know what it was. I really don't. But nor do we care. We really don't care. Uh, Cruz got the win in that, and then it starts the main show. And we've been telling everybody for weeks now. This is gonna go. This is gonna go. Make sure you have snacks, a portable bathroom, because this is gonna be a long ass show. If you throw the free show out. It wasn't that long. Just just a little bit over a little bit over three hours. I think it was like three hours and seventeen minutes. I was something. shocked. Yeah, I kind of expected it to go closer to four, if not over four hours. Um, I'll be honest, uh, straight out of the bat, this the show shocked me in so many ways because there was how can I put this nicely? Vince's footprint. You know, his kiss my ass club, I'm going to do what I want. He didn't have it as much in this show as you really thought. And there's a couple of things we'll get into with some matches and stuff like that. It You didn't see Vince's, you know, like I said, kiss my ass attitude. I'm the boss footprint on this show. I, I'm going to do gradings now and then we'll just trickle right into Raw and SmackDown so we won't save these until after... It wasn't a great show, but it wasn't, you know, one of the Saudi Arabian shows. I was talking with the English professor, and he's going to give you his rundown a little bit as well here in a little bit. Um, six and a half, seven is 
tops that I can give this. This is your second biggest pay-per-view, and nothing happened. Seth won. We'll get to that. But nothing happened. Where were your returns? Like, why did you save, spoiler, Sasha to return Monday night? Why did you not have anything else happen? Yeah, this was just a card. Here's your matches. The Go matches, home. The matches were okay to four-start. Being a Seth Rollins fan, um, I think th- that match saved the card from being a five star card. Um, Brock wasn't horrible. I compare this match honestly with Seth and Brock this time around to the one that Brock had roughly two years ago with AJ Styles, where AJ made Brock look like a million dollars. Right. This wasn't quite as good as that match, um, but this was another one. And you know, I'll, I'll I'll disagree. Mark Mark Henry, world's strongest man, was quoted this weekend saying that uh, Brock made Seth look like a you know top level competitor and everything like that. And I just I don't get it because Brock didn't do anything that he doesn't normally do. He just did more of it. Suplexes, throwing a guy around. Suplexes, throwing a guy around. That's basically what Brock did. He just took more, more of a punishment. Um, you know, he took he went through a freaking table. Seth went off the top rope and frog splashed him through a freaking table. I think Seth made him, you know, Lesnar a little bit more, a lot more palatable in this match. And this is where I talk about Vince McMahon's footprint on things. I had absolutely zero hope that this title was going to go back on Seth. I did too. I did too. Absolutely zero. I didn't even, I honestly, if I wouldn't have had company over, um, my one stepson was over to watch it, I probably would have gone to bed prior to that match. Prior to that match. I just, I had that, like I said, least a hope i i didn't even want to know how the hell brock won it but they just kept playing and playing i was and right before seth did the last stomp i was like i wonder if they're gonna put it on him and turn brock good guy in the near future in the near good thought and it it just hit me and i'm not blowing smoke here i was just like oh the angles they could have if they did something like that and then Brock loses, and I was like, hmm. That's a great something. thought. It's something I did not think about. That's a great thought that Brock is, he I, he's not going to be a Clash of Champions. He might not be at Survivor Series either. He'll probably be over at Saudi Arabia because he's going to get $9.9 million to go over there, whatever. But it's a great idea that he could be off for three, four pay-per-views, come back, and because Heyman goes with somebody else. Because Heyman's, he's busy because he's running Raw. But um, he needs something to do on air as well. Yeah, if you don't have, if you have Paul Heyman under you and you don't have him as an on air talent in some way, shape, or form, you're, you're wasting what you have. He's, he, he's one of the top five best voices in the business. Without a doubt. After me. Well, um, all right. maybe between maybe. you and me. Yeah, but, all right. Uh, yeah, so that I, that's a great point. I, I never thought of that, and it's Brock does need something else. You know, he's going to be around. He's he's officially retired from UFC. Done. Uh, Dana White's like, I don't want you back. Stay away. Go do whatever else you want to. So he he's here. He's here to stay. It's just how often are we going to see him? And as long as they have Seth as champion or in the championship run, he's beat Brock twice. Right. Um, the only time Brock's beat him was after Seth was in a, you know, hellacious beat down match and he comes down and does money in the bank cash in. So Brock really doesn't, when I say this, he really doesn't have a leg to stand on to keep being in the picture where Seth is concerned. Good guys on Monday Night Raw few and far between that are at Seth's level, level. Yeah. that can take Brock or, you know, 
God forbid, Baron Corbin or somebody like that and make them look good. And this was proved straight out. Who's the first one to come after Seth after he gets a title? AJ Styles. AJ Styles. If they'd let those two have a series, let them do what both of them are capable of doing. It'd be amazing. It, it could be, you know, some of the best matches in many years in WWE. Sidebar from that, though, as you're going to notice that we're not doing SummerSlam in order. We're just going to throw matches up and talk about them. Um, I want AJ to drop the U.S. title, though, because I don't want that title just to be... I don't want it title versus title. I don't want any of that. That's me. I Drop that title and go instantly right after Seth and do that series and extend it over four to five months. It'll be great. I agree with you. But with him just having that title tied up going after Seth, that's just another way that WWE says, hey, see, this title doesn't matter either. So well, it, it was a tie, you know, the U.S. title goes back to NWA heritage. So it's not a Vince McMahon right. thing. So he's, he he's doesn't gonna, care about it. He doesn't care about it. I personally, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. I want to see AJ hold the title. And if they make a, a switch, then AJ is forced to give up the U.S. title, which, you know, forces a tournament, a tournament or something like that. That's kind of the way I'd like to see it, but I don't know. Are they going to have AJ win title from Seth at some point? A couple of months. Yes, you, you got Roman Reigns. Are, are they ever going to turn him rule breaker? I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, you just you don't know what they're doing with it. I think they're just kind of in a okay. We got two really good guys. We got to get them together in some way, shape, or form. I don't think they know where they're going with this right now. No, yeah, they don't know where they're going. All right, let's talk about Becky and Nat. Uh, I thought this was actually a great match. I, I love these two working together. I'm not a Nat fan. I've never been. Nothing against her. Uh, again, I will foreshadow what the English professor has to say about her um, because I've already heard the interview. But uh, I'm just not a Nat fan. I, I really wasn't in... We know that it was going to be a one-off because something was going to happen. Lacey instantly out of the picture. Now Nat's out of the picture. As we head to Raw, we know who's in the picture now. But the the match was a you know was a good match. Um, you know better than a lot. Not knocking them. A lot of the female matches in that it was a physical match, but it had you know the technical. And I'm on the same boat with Nat. I'm not. I could go one way or another about it. she is to me a supporting character, um, somebody developing others, you know, somebody that you can consistently get a good match, good interviews, good promos, whatever from. But not title picture. But not not title picture unless somebody gets injured and they got to make a, a quick, carryover uh, one. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know. A quick title change or something like that. Nothing against her, but don't the thing that just irritates the hell out of me with her is she just goes on Bret Hart's reputation so much. Yep. And you know, everything from Touché. her colors to her music to her sayings and everything. And that's all great, but you really project yourself as a leech um, wow. is the nicest way that I can put it when you, when, okay, yeah, that's our family. Yeah, be proud of it and everything. But my God, you got to do, if you're expecting to make it into business, you got to be your own carve character. out your own niche. Yep. You got to, and that's, that's my problem with her. She's never Been really herself. done that. Yeah. You know, God love her dad. Been a year since Jim the Anvil Neidhart uh, passed away and everything. He was a character. He, he was, was a nutcase, but he he did it on his own. He, he um, was something before he was the Heart Foundation. Foundation, yeah, yeah. But that's my only that's my only deal with her. Uh, next match we'll just skip over is Goldberg beat Dolph. Four moves in this match. Yeah, it's, uh, I. This goes to Dolph in his ability to sell and little bit overselling 
but being able to sell. He made Goldberg's spears look like it was 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, and Goldberg looked, for what he did, he looked crisp he did. this time. Again, this he didn't knock was, himself out. So that's yeah, a plus. he didn't. He didn't come out with a concussion and his eyes rolling in the back of his head and blood sleep seeping down his face like he did in Saudi against the Undertaker. Um, I think they had this match because straight out because of that match. That's exactly. And that was a it. that was a horrible taste to go out. Is he going to be back? Is he going to do other things? Eh, maybe, but it leaves a better taste if he's not around in the fans' for a year mouth. Again. Yeah. By him going out like you know, like this, just absolutely looking like he was destroying Dolph with his spears. AJ Ricochet, I love AJ Styles. I am one that I just can't get there's nothing about Ricochet that I like. So I, I really don't care if we talk about this match. I know you love AJ. I know uh, you do. I do too. Um it, it's, Ricochet's just if it's not a spot match, he doesn't have a match. And I'm tired of him. He need. I think he needs to be in a tag team. When they had him with Aleister, Aleister Black, Black, that's when you kind of got. I was like, holy, you know, don't I was shit, excited. This that guy's was real right. good, and this was good. He's he's kind of like. I'll I'll say how I feel about Ali, is the same way. Unless it's you know, unless it's a spot fest, unless it's you know, ooh ah moves like that. I don't think that they can have a match. No, they can't. And they can't have a good, a really good match unless they're with somebody like AJ Styles. And I'm sorry, it may sound like I'm in love with AJ. You are. Do I, I mean, the do it, it's a serious man crush, but he is top five in, in my eyes, top five wrestlers of all time. He can do... If it can be done in the ring, he I can do it. I was just going to say, he can fly like Ricochet can and sell it. He can work the leg like Flair and sell it. He could get into a fist fight like, I don't know, the Brooklyn Brawlers got in my head, but that's clearly not oh, who I wanted to bad. say. But, you know, <laughs> he, could, he could get into those legit, any type of wrestling AJ can do and sell it. I couldn't see Ricochet working over a leg. He, there's nothing to him, so he has to fly. His fighting ability, oh, he's gonna kick you. He's gonna. He, he's not. He's not a grappler. So I. He's just something needs to change with him for me to go. Yeah, he is the type. If he's not in a tag team, he I think would be an amazing heel. Um, he just he has that look to me that if he gets the prick look to him in attitude, I think he could be a really good heel. He could be one of these, I don't want to say coward heels, but he could be one of these heels that just, you know, the up the violence with him. Yeah. Uh, Bailey and Ember, again, a match that we're not going to spend a lot of time on. It was an easier win for Bailey than I thought. This is where I thought Sasha was going to come out. And I was left wanting more. Yeah, you just oh belly to belly off the top rope pin, and you're like looking around. Somebody coming? Somebody coming? Nothing. Nothing. KO against Shane. Elias is a special referee. We all knew the writing was on the wall that KO was not leaving. He's too hot right now. But I thought this was going to end. I thought this was going to end with Shane. You know, decimating him. And it didn't. Yeah, this was another one. This was one of the instances of SummerSlam where I was talking about the McMahon footprint and everything like that. I expected Shane to win. Okay, then they're going to bring back KO under a mask as Kevin Owens, Lucha, Lucha Libre Owens. cousin, right. or something like that. But honestly, I was pleasantly surprised that they had Owens win. Um, Shane took a hell of a kick. To the nuts in this match, um, you know there was it, it was no baby tap, legs spread, full fledged ankle right in the old uh, twig and giggle berries <laughs> nuggets, and uh, but it was it was a decent match, you know. Of course, you had the Elias factor and Owens beating the hell out of him, which is something that'll be talked about on Raw or on SmackDown. Sorry, yeah. Um, it was it was a 
It, it was, sufficed. It was all right. Flair and Trish. Um, I was on the fence on this match. Like, I didn't care that Trish was back. I was more disappointed that the Monday before Trish didn't get into the tag team match. She just stood on the ring. So I thought, oh, great. What's this leading to for her match against Charlotte? Uh, a couple people I've talked to thought this was a great match. It was a great match. I didn't. I I could have cared less. Yeah, I, I really didn't think they were going to have Trish win at all. Um, it's just she's not she's not full time. Vince McMahon doesn't have people winning. He their loves town. her though. This was his crush. This was this was something you know. I I just didn't. I didn't really care about it. was an okay match. It was a, you know, good match. Um, I'm not a Charlotte Flair fan by any means at all. Um, I think she's overrated and another one that begs off of her dad's reputation. Um, but it was, eh. Kofi and Randy's not over. No. But why have it ended in a double count out? Uh, my guess with this is just to take it longer. Not give either one of them a decision. Not give either one of them, well, he did this, or he won to one. Okay, they played into Randy Orton being a dick. Um, Good point. Saying, you know, going over and glaring and everything at Kofi's family. Kofi's family's everything to him. That's been played up, you know, since over before last, WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, since before WrestleMania. So I, th- I think it kind of fit, but I'm really not... Excited to see these two go at it. Randy Orton, you see everything that he has. You've seen it. You've seen it numerous times. He's another one that needs some kind of change, some kind of life. But injected he's the into one him. that can take it away from Kofi and not have major social media repercussions because he is loved. He's been the legacy of WWE for a while. He's got that tenure that... So if he beats Kofi, he's got a mile full of fans that love him no matter what. And Kofi's fans are going to be like, okay, at least it wasn't Roman Reigns. Or at yeah. least it wasn't... When you're seeing security take signs, anybody but Roman, you know that people don't right. want to see him do it. And they were they did that in this match. Yeah. Towards the beginning of the match. Um you're, you know, I, I agree with you on if it was going to go on anybody, it would be Randy. My only concern with this is no matter who beats Kofi. You're going to get uh, it's backlash. Un- unless it's Xavier Woods turning on him or Big, Big e, e turning on him. You're going to have the racial it, factor card We introduced. hate bringing that up. I, d- I really do, and I was, I was second guessing. No, that, we hate but bringing it up, but it's, it's needed to be said, because we we say it at least. It, it needs to be said, but you're going to get that unless it's something, you know? I, and unless he gives up the, unless he gives up the title. Or an injury or, or, or something. Or something like that. There's going to be the backlash, and Randy Orton is getting to the point of... He doesn't give a he shit. He doesn't give a shit, and he will say whatever comes up to it. So it's kind of what the hell is going to go on with this one? Right. You know, are they going to are they going to develop this couple of months down the road and then are they going to have oh, I don't know, Kofi gives a shot on Monday Night Raw to Ali and Ali nuts him and takes a title. I don't know. Vince McMahon's pushing Ali for some reason. I don't get it, but fake DJZ. Yeah. Uh we talked about the Seth Brock match, so we'll talk about which was probably the most talked about non-factor match on SummerSlam in a return of Bray Wyatt against Finn Balor. Everybody blew up about this. Um, The gimmick's great. The gimmick is great, and some matches have already been leaked that maybe could happen at Summer or Survivor Series. I just there's too many S's, by the way, Um, and I'm not going to talk about them now. But, how did you... The match itself was okay. We knew Bray was going to get the win. Yeah. That's enough about the match. How did you like the character development now with Bray? I like the creepy stuff like that. I do too. Um, I The lantern head is amazing. Yeah, that was... I, I was like, oh my god, here we go with this again. You can just feel what little bit of hair I have on the back of my head standing up. Um, 
I like the creepy stuff. I said this before with this gimmick. If they take it the right way, back when Bray Wyatt was feuding with John Cena and he had the kids come down in the dark to the ring and then singing, the, he's got the whole world by his. That was one. Of, that was one of the creepiest things I've yeah. seen in the last ten years. And they're piggybacking on this. And it's funny. I don't know if you read. There was um, parents that had to take their kids out of the arena when he started his thing out into the concourse and that because it was scaring the hell out of that people great. so much. And that's what I don't mean to be rude, you know. No, I, I, I don't, don't think, either. I hope the kids aren't traumatized and stuff like that. That's what it's supposed to do, right? If this guy is supposed to be this creepy clown, creepy demon, creepy whatever. You're supposed to get that reaction. You're not supposed to be like, oh, this guy's going to give me a freaking yeah, ice cream bop. This isn't a doink the clown with a, uh, what do you call it when they a don't flower. smile? Oh, a frown? A frown. This okay. isn't a doink the clown. Who do 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 giving kids stuff to kids and then frowning and looking evil? No, this dude reminds me that uh, damn movie It. Right. With the, the teeth and the clown and pulling kids Penny down w- into the Pennywise. suit. Pennywise. Pennywise into the sewer and everything this is where this is what it's creepy and it, it gets the ratings one thing that i want to happen wwe if you actually listen to a podcast clip this part right here and take it to developmental your storyline writers or whatever the finn match okay you know finn's taking a break this side or the other and he, it was his return but anytime that Bray is going to have that end-all, end-all of matches with whoever he's in a feud in, I think the lantern head turns to that person. Like, if it was Bray this time, he should have walked down carrying Bray's head with the lantern instead of his own. Or if it's going to be Kofi, have that head be Kofi's. You you know, it's just another symbolic saying, I'm going to rip your... MF and head off. You know, they could do something with the lights going out, hearing his music, and then a, a spotlight shown right in the middle of the ring, and there's Kofi's head. Or there's Seth's head. Right. Or something like that. Foreshadow. You could foreshadow without him even being in it. Right. He doesn't even need to be at the show, and you could do something like that. Develop it. I think it's a good idea. I think that would be an awesome way to develop the character just don't make it a joke how do you like that he's now using the mandible claw as his finisher at least he did sunday uh i think it fits the character a lot better than sister abigail Abigail. this again violent choking um killing clawing, clawing at somebody's clawing at somebody's face pardon the pun um, you know, it, it fits. It yeah. fits a lot better than anything else he could do. Don't put his, you know, big old ass up on the top rope or jumping off the ropes and stuff like that. Make it a dirty, dominant heel. Yeah, I, I agree. And social media blew up about him. It, it was a great spot for Bray, and hopefully Vince doesn't shit on his own project once again. Hopefully. All right, let's roll into Raw and SmackDown. Literally, we're glazing over things that we want to talk about, and we will not talk about every match. We won't even bring up some people's names. The number one thing I got from Raw, the King of the Ring returns on Monday night, and I'm excited about that. And as we get your thoughts, I will bring up the competitors from Raw and SmackDown. So how the King of the Ring, when it first started and when they've done it, has been... It's shown some of the most life athletic, changing. athletic, life athletic changing matches. Yeah. And a lot of the greats um, have, you know, King of the Ring was something that either they won and it kick-started their career, or they were in a lull and they won and it gave them energy, or it was out of respect. I mean, how iconic can you get out of the King of the Ring uh, Steve Austin beats Jake Roberts, goes up there, stands on the on the steps and says, you have your John this and, you know, Mark this. Well, Austin 316 says, I just kicked your ass. Steve Austin pulled that out right then and the there. Spot. That was not rehearsed. That was not anything. And look what it did 
for Austin's career. Austin 316 the next day yep. on on Raw and everything like that. And then the shirts, the, it just went nuts. On the back burner of that, though, it also gave Jake another push because he was being his whole Christian thing at that right. time. So it gave Jake just a little, not a not the Stone Cold nudge, but it gave him another nudge that he was around a little bit longer then. Yeah. Look at, you know, the first one back to Bret Hart winning it. Um, I like that format the best because they had the King of the Ring was the actual pay per view ninety percent of the card. The right. whole thing took place. They wrestled three or four matches. Um, it's like you a know, super indie for IWC. When you shut down an event and make it a uh, throw in one or two extra matches, a tournament you're engulfed in that tournament that day. Then WrestleMania four is still one of my favorite WrestleManias because of that. Yep, you just it. You just turn the attention, you pull the attention right to the event, to the whole event, to every match, because you don't know, you don't know who's gonna, who's gonna win, you don't know who they're gonna push, and with this field that I've I've scanned over and I recall some of them, you don't really know. There's so many angles, um, you know. One one other with the King of the Ring that kind of made me sad seeing it when they brought it up was you know Harley Race winning it. Yep. Um, I knew with Harley passing recently, you were going to bring up Harleys, and I was going to say Owens. I, uh, I really and didn't then Owen Hart. Yeah, then I I really seen Owen last night, and it's just, you know, those are two guys. Obviously, Harley being a lot older um, meant so much to the business. And okay, was it a rub off for him? Was it a gimme? End of the year. So so end so of career. What? I mean, yeah, I don't so, care. So what? Owen Hart. That just skyrocketed. The King of Hearts. He was done for the most part with the Brett feud. The King of Hearts. That led him to with Jim Cornette and Yokozuna and the tag titles and everything. And you know, God rest so- Owen's soul. It's it's been thirty years now. Wow, bro. Yeah, it ha- That happened in ninety nine. Or I'm um, I'm sorry. No. Nine, yeah. Was it nine, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's been 20 years. Sorry. Um, you know, Owen was a hell of a talent, great talent. Um, kind of got crapped on at the end after Brett left for WCW and everything. But the King of the Ring has just always been there. Booker T, another one. All right, let's, know, let's announce this one. Let's announce this one. From Raw, you have The Miz, you have Ricochet, you have Cedric Alexander. I almost said Cedric the Entertainer. Uh, Samoa Joe, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, and Cesaro. Then from SmackDown, which I don't know why I mentioned him like this, but Kevin Owens, Elias, Almas, Ali, Cruz, Shelton Benjamin is the question mark, Buddy Murphy, who's now getting a push, and the returning Chad Gable as well. SmackDown does not... I, I My pick is somebody on SmackDown... But their roster competitors are not as top heavy. It's on Raw. Right. I um, mean, I could see the Miz doesn't need it. I'm gonna give you my breakdown real quick. The Miz doesn't need it. Ricochet, meh. Cedric, no. Joe, Joe's too badass to be a King of the Ring. You know, these are all my thoughts. I could change it all next week. But he could be an he could be a hell of an arrogant one though. He right. could really play that card. Drew, yeah, come on, he's probably the favorite. Corbin, it could make sense. I will, quit, I will quit watching WWE if Baron Corbin wins the King of the Ring. And then Sammy and Cesaro uh, throwaways on Raw for me. Kevin Owens could get it, and it keeps this thing going because the King of the Ring, the best of the world, there's going to be a shtick there if it goes that way. Elias, yeah. Ali, I don't want to get it. Cruz, Gable, Shelton Benjamin, like I said, returning. Where the hell has he been? Right? Buddy Murphy, this could be great for him. Not my pick. Almas is my pick. I'm I'm on record right now, uh, August 14th, as this recording, saying this fits Almas. You're not putting a title on him. It fits Almas, and you have a queen with him built in already. And, yeah... Yeah, she would be really nice to look at. I would like to see him win that just because of that. Uh, yes, I'm going to be divorced and shot. Uh, my pick, um, Mark's not going to like this. Uh, 
I oh. think uh, Ricochet is going to win it. Um, they just seem to be real high on him, and they haven't given him anything. I really don't think the U.S. title, his little run with that made any sense. Any sense. Um, I think Ricochet's going to be be the one. I think your dark horse in the whole tournament, um, obviously, I'm not going to say like Gable or Benjamin, um, those are no chance winners there to me. Um, I think your dark horse to win it is Samoa Joe. Um, obviously, he's got to be a favorite because of who he is, but I think he's a dark horse favorite. That's just my thought. Uh, next big thing, and actually it's bigger than the King of the Ring, is Sasha Banks is back. Uh, the English professor talks about this in depth on his shtick, so we'll let him go. But uh, real quick, are you happy that Sasha's back? Yeah, I am. I, mean, I, I love don't, the blue hair. <clears throat> I don't, you know, we talked about this months ago about how she reacted about losing the titles and the problems that it caused. You know, you can you can see their point. And everything with that whole situation, but I'm glad she's I'm glad she's back, and I am thankful to the good man above that they brought her back immediately as a bad guy. Yeah, I'm sorry, a bad girl. Um, it just fits her when she was in NXT. It fit her. They turn her good when she comes to the main roster, and she has four one day title reigns. And that was that to me killed the women's title at that at, at that, that point. point. Yes, it did. Um, I, I agree. And yeah, I definitely love the hair color change. I I like that when Becky come down. Even though I'm a Becky fan, that she went toe to toe with her, got the lead on her, and whooped the piss out of her with a chair. Yeah. I mean, it it just looked good. It's it's gonna be a good feud because those two. Are two that can go physically beat the hell out of each other. It's not going to have to be a finesse match or anything. They're going to be able to physically go at it. One more thing about Raw, you can pick it. What what else stood out for you? Because that that's it. Um, this you know the ending with uh, Seth, uh, and it looks like Braun Strowman's going to start. Getting in the Coming picture again. Seth. Do they turn Braun bad guy? Is this a way that they're going to get the title on Braun? And then bring back Brock. And then, then have bring, that match that they want to have. How how are they going to do it? I really don't want them to bring back Brock. Let him, let him be gone for a little bit. Um, well, this could take a while. Did the, I've read so much about Braun, though, that he is... Um, from either Russell's own or Meltzer, I don't remember where I read it, but he kind of feels entitled once he gets into that semi, not semi quote, air quotes, uh, main event status. Like he shows up late, or he wants this, or you know, right now he's toting the line. He's good. Yeah. He's around. He gets that little nudge to be on the ten thirty part of the show, which is the main event, and he turns into a dick. That's I've seen the same thing um, showing up late uh, for everything from the tapings to arena matches, you know, just uh, what, do you, what do they call live them? events, live events, um, stuff like that. And if <laughs> if that's the way he's being and if Braun, if you listen to any podcast, cut this part out of it. If Vince McMahon will suspend and fine Andre the Giant for this shit, he will can you. Yeah. If well you no he won't. Up. No he won't. Call, let me let me no, rephrase he that. He will not he will not can you. I'll take that part out. But he will have you start to lose matches to guys that shouldn't be carrying your jock strap. Yeah. Um Mark would probably say Ricochet. I would say Ricochet. I'd, um, I'd say John guys and Benjamin. Like, and he already had him lose to Ricochet. Right. Um, don't don't push the thing. Vince likes big guys, but it's evident that he's he's not going to push you over the last couple of years. I mean, he took your match uh, against Brock last year from you yep. five days before the damn event. Um, these guys got to realize you piss Vince off, you're under a contract. 
You're sitting. You're either sitting or you're going to take your abuse. Yeah. And if he, like I said, he, he suspended and fined Andre the Giant for this way back when, when he first got the company from his dad, um, who was a, geez, Titus O'Neil didn't let go of a handshake and he got suspended yep. for 30 days. Don't piss Vince off because you'll either take your punishment or you'll sit. Yeah, you're not going to get canned anymore. There's no getting canned. Let's yeah, throw that away. Especially, and that was, that was bad on me, especially with what's going on in yeah. wrestling right now. I mean, I hate to harp on these guys, but Maria and Mike Canales, if Vince is going to sign them to five years, right? do you think he will not let you sit for five years? Or just make a mockery of you? Yeah. Yep. Uh, SmackDown, Chad... I'm going to say my number one thing I got from that is Buddy Murphy needs a push into the mid-card title. He was great on 205. He carried that. Uh, he needed a change because he's a bigger 205-er, and he's got a factor. I don't know if it's the it factor, but he's got a factor that he can go with these big guys. This Roman-Buddy Murphy match, I don't know who made who look good. But it was a good match on SmackDown. And yep. I, I am completely behind Buddy Murphy to get something in roll with this. I, I love I think he what would be I think he would get a really he should get a really good push. You'll probably slap me across the face or faint when I say this. But he in the way he moves and supports and his attitude, he kinda reminds me of a young Arn Anderson. Nice. In in his just brawling that when he popped Roman with that knee last night, all I could see was Arn Anderson coming off the rope and Jack and Ricky Morton in the face with a knee. That's and I was like, Oh my god, it's like he kinda looks like he could be I don't know if anybody's ever gonna be as great of a supporting character as Double A was, but he just he looks like that type of character. Like he could really elevate people he could you know take a title run with it get good matches i mean hell uh, he had a good match with reigns on tv right not on a pay-per-view on, on TV. tv um i think he's a good guy he's just one of these ones let him shine yeah let him shine let him shine uh other than that i mean you got more KO Shane stuff. You get a match with Shane and, I mean, Charlotte and Ember. I love Ember. I want to stop real quick and talk about Ember. I, they're just not, they just won't give her her dues. No. Um, she is just as, in, and might think this is weird, but uh, Asuka, when she had the title, she, she just fell flat. She should have never lost to Charlotte Flair. Right. In that match. Never have lost indecision anything but she's just killed and now look what she's doing kabuki warriors managed by page losing to nikki cross and alexa bliss clean yeah as, they're done as clean yeah you, it, Kyrie san one. and alexa uh, alexa uh, oscar are done yeah, they're, they're, and but this goes back to and yes i'll say it again i hate WWE for the most part, but this goes back to Vince's attitude of wins and losses don't count. Right. Which is crap. It is crap. Because you can't develop anything. You can't develop a good guy climbing the mountain, overcoming the odds, if he doesn't win more than he loses. You can't develop a heel not screwing guys over for many you know, weeks and many matches in that. Wins and losses don't matter. Well, who, who are you going to take serious? And I'll, I'll tell you, this is the biggest case I've seen in probably the last three years or so in wrestling. Actually, probably the last 20. Jinder Mahal. He puts the title, your biggest title, on him for like six months, seven months, whatever the reign was. Have him dominant over guys like Randy Orton. Um, where the hell is he now? He's injured. Is now. is he? He was just on. What was it last week chasing the twenty four seven title? I think he was, was he? one of the guys running. 
he's he he's he's in the stupid card now. I hate yeah. the twenty four seven thing. We don't he, talk about it. He's. I mean, is he having dinner with Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable? Chad Gable? Um, That's a table for three to watch on the network, isn't it? Yeah. I'd How miss- you were everything and now you're nothing. That, and that's Vince's attitude. Not, you know, wins and losses don't count. He That's out of touch. You got to develop him. You got to run him. If you're talking a baby face little dude like Mikey Whipwreck was in ECW, that's a different thing. That was his whole scheme was getting beat all the time but never giving up. Vince doesn't do that. He has freaking Roman lose to his son in an international show. Chad's on fire. But turn week. around... And Shane loses to me, Kevin Owens. Right. Not saying that Kevin Owens should have won the match, but you're gonna push, you're gonna push your own son and everything like that. And then that's why I kind of watered down Kevin Owens beating him. I did. To me. Hey, uh, that's Raw and SmackDown in a nutshell. Uh, it was mostly a follow up of SummerSlam. Uh, after you listen to the English professor, we're going to be back. And by the way, we're giving tickets away. Yeah, I didn't forget about that. We're going to be giving tickets away to Stomp Out Cancer this Friday night in Lamont Furnace. Uh, it's a great card. There's a Bullet Club member there. If you've caught on to us, keep saying that, and you found out who it is, good. Won't mention the name, but you'll see him there. Uh, Lord Zoltan, Dominic DiNucci, Hooven's in a match, CJ Sensation's in a match. I have another spoiler in my head that I know, but it has not been released yet, so I can't tell anybody. Uh, it's going to be a great card, and all the proceeds go towards uh, the American Cancer Society. There will be auctions there. There will be stuff that you can buy, get there, spend a hell of a lot of money. After, after the English professor, we'll give those tickets away. Three wrestlers claim the rights to challenge Ric Flair for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Ricky Steamboat was a former champion and hadn't yet cashed in on his rematch clause. Lex Luger was the defending United States champion in the midst of his longest reign. He had lost the title to Michael P.S. Hayes and then to Stan Hansen, but quickly regained WCW's number two prize each time. And then Terry Funk threw his name in the hat by pile driving Ric Flair on the announcer's table. A ring technician a powerhouse, and the innovator of hardcore wrestling all demanded to be deemed number one contender for the 10 pounds of gold. After much deliberation, WCW's championship committee determined that Terry Funk could not simply come out of retirement and catapult himself to the top rung of the ladder through his dastardly deeds. Like the Nature Boy told him right after winning the belt, it's not like when you were champion, Terry. Things are different now. Flair was trying to make a fair point, but Funk did not see it that way. The championship committee also felt that although the United States championship was the recognized number one contender to the world title, Rick Steamboat was entitled to a rematch. Lex Luger was left out of the title picture and Steamboat was granted top billing. As Steamboat lay in the ring following his disqualification victory over Funk, the eternally middle-aged and crazy Texan searched the ringside area for a weapon. Lex Luger came to the ring with a chair. Funk assessed the situation and made the same choice, leaving the ring and avoiding a clash with a 278-pound bodybuilder. Luger asked for the microphone as the crowd erupted into a chant of, Luger, Luger, Luger. He held up his right hand to ask the crowd to hold it down so that he may address them. After explaining that he did not have an ego problem, but rather a lot of pride, he held Steamboat off the mat and hit him with the clothesline. Then he brutalized him with the chair and punished him in the human torture rack. Luger took the mic once more, pointed at Steamboat with disgust, and smugly declared, There lies your number one contender. Luger had studied well and obviously knew the difference between lie and lay. With Luger now engaging Steamboat in a feud, Funk was free to challenge Flair. So we fans got two feuds, Flair versus Funk and Steamboat versus Luger. Steamboat has said that while working that program with Luger, he had to teach him how to be a bad guy. Steamboat, who never wrestled heel in his career, was guiding Luger in the way of villainy. During one of their matches, Lex administered a devastating move that left the dragon in a crumpled heap. The total package reached down to deliver another crushing blow, but Steamboat whispered, No, no, no! Go yell at the fat lady in the front row! Lex obeyed and let the dragon fall back to the mat. 
And instead of delivering another move that few fans would remember, he pushed down the top rope, leaned forward, and yelled at the elderly heavyset woman. Several years ago, Mark and I ventured into Crockett territory to meet some of our childhood heroes, including the Dragon, and get to know new wrestlers we would follow closely in the years ahead. During a match, one wrestler had both hands on the steel barricade and leaned into the crowd, resembling Luger when he leaned over the top rope. This wrestler shouted at a young woman a couple of rows in front of us. The woman felt her actions would speak louder than her words and cracked the wrestler in the face with the palm of her hand. The next morning, as we left the hotel, we saw this woman leaving her room. I said to Mark, I think that's the lady who slapped the wrestler. I introduced myself to her and asked if she was at the matches the night before. She confirmed her attendance by telling me, I was the one that slapped that man's face. She didn't talk about a specific match or move that she saw. Obviously, she remembered hitting that wrestler for getting too close and being ungentlemanly. As I watched Monday Night Raw with my son, he said to me, that's why I like IWC, because after they do a move, they say to us, who sucks now? They don't do that in WWE. My son was referring to Dylan Bostic, easily one of the best heels anywhere in pro wrestling. He shows arrogance. He sells a beating well. He cheats and he includes the crowd. We fans will tell him how much we think he sucks. He'll perform a crippling move. And rather than attempt to pin or submit his opponent, he'll turn to us the ticket holders and ask us our opinion of his work who sucks now Bostic will shout with his arms back and chest puffed forward and even if my son is deep into one of his ceaseless ramblings or on his way to the bathroom for the fourth time or chewing on a pretzel or just enjoying the match he'll put that on hold and shout back you do I recently attended a Shakespeare in the Park performance of Othello with my family a gentleman from the company gave a speech before the show and referenced WWE. He told us that if the spirit moved us, we were free to cheer and boo. So as Yago devised a plan to destroy Othello, we audience members booed. When his schemes were uncovered by his wife, Amelia, who forced him to endure the consequences of his heinous actions, we cheered. But more, more than that, the actors acknowledged us. Yago laughed at us as we showed disgust for his wicked ploy. And when we clapped and shouted for Amelia, who was verbally releasing her frustrations on her evil husband, she turned to us and screamed, yeah, come on, flapping her hands towards herself in an attempt to inspire us to encourage her more. A good wrestling card will have plenty of athleticism and storytelling that should leave you breathless but still wanting more. Part of that formula should somehow, some way, include the fans in the performance. When Ray Lynn was announced as an impromptu opponent for Katie Arquette's IWC Women's World Championship, we fans cheered. Ray Lynn was deserving. She had been loyal to the company for years and had improved immensely as an in-ring performer. Ray Lynn baby-faced it up on her way to the ring with a huge smile. She high-fived fans. She balanced herself between the ropes and winked at us. She pointed to the crowd. Then following her title victory and the double switch between her and Katie, Ray Lynn included the fans again when she pointed to her vagina and reminded us what we could all go and do. She left the ring with her new entourage, turned to us again, and with great satisfaction declared, I'm a champion! Jimmy Nuts returned to IWC after the three-year absence. Once he broke through the curtain, I remembered a moment during one of his matches from several years ago in which his opponent was gathering himself outside the ring. Jimmy Nuts decided to press the issue and not allow his opponent time to recuperate. Nuts turned to us and flapped his arms. If there is a way one can flap his arms in a questioning fashion, Nuts did it. He was asking us if we wanted him to fly. We screamed back, yeah! And Nuts flew over the ropes onto his opponent. Perhaps including the fans depends on the venue. IWC takes place in a gymnasium. WWE takes place in major arenas around the world. Maybe WWE superstars are just on too large of a stage to include us. But Hulk Hogan, who invented fan interaction, just read his book, it says so in there, was including tens of thousands of fans during his matches. Did we think he could slam Big John Studd? Should he shake the macho man's hand? Could we believe there were identical Hebners? Would we swear to watch his back in case Jimmy Hart handed Terry Funk the megaphone or branding iron? Although he may think a touch too highly of himself, the Hulkster was a master at including us. Many wrestlers over the years have communicated with us fans. Even a somewhat green Lex Luger who hadn't yet been schooled by one of the greatest of all time knew enough to hold his hand up to quiet the fans 
because he had something important to say. And certain wrestlers today still talk to us, so it isn't really the size of the venue. Charlotte Flair will walk around the ring running her mouth to the crowd. Even if the camera doesn't pick up what she's saying, it doesn't matter. Her body language and facial expressions tell the story. And maybe a few people in the first few rows heard her and had a genuine reaction. Sasha Banks also gets it. Like Gray Lynn, she came to the ring and had high fives and hugs for the fans before turning on Natalia. And what about Natalia? There were ample opportunities during her overly rehearsed speech to truly talk to us. I'm a big fan of hers, but it was obvious she was done saying her lines and was waiting in the ring for Sasha's music to hit. Or perhaps she was instructed to fake cry. What would have been more effective was if she had started to tell a story and got interrupted. Jake the Snake Roberts slammed the coffin lid on Undertaker's hand and DDT Paul Bearer. Then he turned to us and said, You know, it seems to me that when the Undertaker sat up like a zombie in Night of the Living Dead, Snake smashed him with a chair repeatedly. As I was saying, Roberts continued, it seems to me the Undertaker sat up again. Jake got out of Dodge as the Undertaker gave chase with the casket dragging behind him. I still would like to know what Jake Roberts was about to say. And that's the point. He engaged me and I remembered it. Shane McMahon is incapable of acknowledging us. And I don't think it's his character's arrogance. I just don't think he's good enough to react on time. That's why when the fans started chanting CM Punk several weeks ago, Shane was at a loss. Too much of Raw seemed disengaged and insincere. Wrestlers who are far too talented were just going through the motions. Stephanie McMahon has expressed her desire to be Disney, and that is the direction the product is heading in. Jim Ross used to yell, In the NWA, we wrestle! Stephanie says WWE's goal is to put smiles on faces. Their goal is not to give the fans a genuine reaction if that reaction is shock or sadness or anger. It's only to make us smile. Fan interaction isn't just handshakes on the way to the ring. It's a commitment to one's character. It's understanding what we fans are thinking and what we're feeling and reacting to that. Greg Valentine said Tito Santana would ask for the hammer to go heavy on the elbows and forearms. Santana wanted the fans to believe in the hammer. But according to Valentine, Santana wanted that one guy in the ninth row to have a good time. And if that meant taking a harder hit, He was willing to absorb that so that one audience member felt a greater connection to the performance. For so many of today's wrestlers that want to go into movies, they don't understand that basic principle of performance. In today's English Tip of the Week, we'll study the differences between peak, P-E-E-K, peak, P-E-A-K, and peak, P-I-Q-U-E. Peak. P-E-E-K is a glance or a quick look. You can remember this by recalling that C, E-E, has two E's. And to see something quickly has two E's. Peak, P-E-E-K, is to see quickly. Peak, P-E-A-K, is a topmost point. Or to reach that topmost point. Remember that this version of peak has E-A in the middle of the word, and you have to reach R-E-A-C-H for the peak, P-E-A-K. Finally, peak, P-I-Q-U-E, is to upset or excite someone. Remember that if you're peaked, P-I-Q-U-E-D, you may have a question about something. Let's take a look at an example of each. When Jake the Snake Roberts waited backstage with a chair to hit either Macho Man or Miss Elizabeth, he took a quick look through the curtains to see where they were. He tried to see them, S-E-E, see them. So did he peek, P-E-E-K, peek, P-E-A-K, or peek, P-I-Q-U-E, at them? The answer is A, peek, P-E-E-K. Remember that peak has two E's, just like C. P-E-E-K, S-E-E. When the Ultimate Warrior skipped out in the WWF, the Macho Man was left without a partner to take on Ric Flair and Razor Ramon at Survivor Series. Randy Savage turned to the most unlikely source as a replacement. 
he went on primetime wrestling and asked one of the color commentators, who also happened to be the financial consultant for the Nature Boy and the Bad Guy, Mr. Perfect, to be his partner. When Macho Man asked the Perfect One if he would uh, consider being my partner, Kurt Henning shocked us all and said, yeah, I'll consider it. Did this proposal peak, P-E-E-K, peak, P-E-A-K, or peak, P-I-Q-U-E, Mr. Perfect's interest? Was Mr. Perfect trying to get a better look at something? No, not really. Was Mr. Perfect trying to reach for something? No. Was Mr. Perfect interested to find out more? Did he have to iron out some details and ask some questions? Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S. Yes, this proposal piqued, P-I-Q-U-E-D, Mr. Perfect's interest. Once the brain heard that, he blew a gasket. What? Screamed the brain. You'll consider it. When all reason failed, Bobby Heenan's anger reached a fever pitch, and he slapped Mr. Perfect in the face. He immediately regretted his mistake and tried to apologize. When Bobby Heenan slapped Mr. Perfect, was the brain's anger at its peak, P-E-A-K, peak, P-E-A-K, or peak, P-I-Q-U-E? The brain wasn't looking for anything. He didn't have a question about anything. His anger reached, R-E-A-C-H-E-D, its peak, P-E-A-K. And with that, class, you're dismissed. Hey, everybody, all the Livewire fans out there and you wrestling fans, I love you all. This is the Livewire KTV, and you are listening to the Can Crushers podcast. You want all the news on wrestling? Tune in to Can Crushers podcast. Listen to all the top wrestlers out there today. You got the top OVW wrestlers. You got me. You got Randall Floyd. You got Jay Lee. You got some of the best today being trained by some of the best on Can Crushers podcast. Tune in, listen, learn, love, laugh. All right, guys, it is now time for the contest. We, we're going to give these uh, two general mission tickets away to everybody as we decided to do it separately. We did the Facebook Live already, folks, and I know it's just easier to record, and we're going to announce the winner because if you watch it on Facebook Live, you now know that she won. We can say right. she, she because it is a she. So it is Ashley Ludwin. Uh, congratulations. You are now going to stomp out cancer. Um, if you haven't reached out to me already or whatever, we'll just all reach out to each other. I'll pass your name along to the Tresslers. And one more thing, guys. I'm going to post a great story about how stomp out cancer started. It's going to be posted tomorrow morning. Uh, maybe midday, because we, all, we we can't mess with the tournament starting at 9 o'clock. If I double post this, that, and the other thing, I don't want to post it ahead of time. So I'll post it after the tournament, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, it gives a great story about uh, the Tresslers and Stomp Out Cancer and everything. It, it, it's just a wonderful thing. Um, Chad and I were just talking. He's really bummed that he can't go. He's he's going fishing here in the near future. Hunt, hunt. Uh, whatever. He, he's doing some shit that I don't like. Up in, up in <laughs> Maine. I'm traveling a long distance with the family. Yeah, well, that in itself is pretty awesome that you're taking the fam. Yeah, pray for me that we all make it up there. Yeah, if you make and it up there. there. If Sue listens to everybody that you want to bone on today's show, you will not have to I, worry about that. Yeah. She but... Would. Congratulations again to Ashley Ludwin. Uh, you're going to stomp out cancer. If you see us there, um, because myself, the English professor, and Paul will all be there, come over and whoever you're bringing, let's get a, a photo together so we can post it on Facebook and I can put it on the internet and blah, blah, blah. Just to say, hey, you're there. Congratulations and winning. Again, all you have to do is show up and the Tresslers will have your tickets there. All right. So there's a lot more going on this weekend as well. Uh, the Rated X Superstar will be at Future of Honor in Joppa, Maryland. The Briscoes are going to be there. They're kind of doing what Chris LaRusso <coughs> went through a couple years ago in Pittsburgh. They're, they're the Future of Honor tournament, you know. It's, it's something big. It really is. And now that MCW and ROH are 
working together. You're going to see more ROH people down there. And it's not a bad trip. Just to let you know, when you want to go, we have an inn for tickets and housing. On the Briscoes, check out from, I think it's about a week ago, their uh, ladder war match against the uh, Gorillas of Destiny. Yes. Um, brutal, brutal, a godly brutal match. Um, if you like that kind of stuff, I mean, it, it's not ridiculously brutal. It's just, yeah, it's a ladder match. It's it's bad with those guys. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, more stuff coming around our neck of the woods. August 24th, there's a show in Altoona, Pennsylvania. It's Imagine Pro Wrestling. We've covered a couple. And, again, it's just because so much has been booked on that same day that we'll make it back to Imagine. We really will. We love the show. We love the content. We love the owners and everything about it. Uh, but we have to take a step back from that one. On that show, though, Sam Adonis is going to be there. It's Corey Graves' brother. He is a huge Trump supporter in Mexico. So the storyline's amazing. He, oh. he is going to get shot. Yeah, this is, this is going to be one of those things where people are going to be posted watching, you know, guards are going to be watching uh, the fans and everything like that. And, you know, fan pulls up a pixie stick or something like that, they're going to get shot because they think that they're going to shoot him. The next one uh, that we will be covering, it is the same day, August 24th. It's Asylum Pro Wrestling and Code Red Wrestling, bringing you a benefit for Eric Shea and Alora. It's called Skin Deep. That'll take place in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Tickets, you can go on our website, and it leads you to where you need to get tickets if you don't want to go searching. Um, Shea had a... An injury with fire, and he lost 99%, no, uh, about 80% of his face. And, you know, he's back into wrestling, wearing a mask for a little bit. But if you've seen the pictures, my God. And Alora hit a bear on the way to the hospital to see her uh, boyfriend, husband, however you want to call it. Um, everything from there will be donated to Eric and Alora. There'll be a bake sale. We are bringing two baskets to be auctioned off. Uh, not auctioned, raffled off, whatever. Raffled. Yeah, if, I, if somebody wants to do an auction on them, good. $2 over there, $3 over there, $3, whatever. I could do that. That actually sounded pretty good. Uh, maybe after the podcast, I'll be an auctioneer. But, guys, support this one. Um, like we said, all benefits going to... Eric Shea, uh, looking forward, we're going to Winston-Salem, as we said. September's not been booked yet. There's, well, there is. Uh, September 13th in Wheeling, West Virginia. We're going to high stakes because Jimmy Nuts has returned. I don't know if I told you guys that here in the near future or past. Not, not in the last 30 seconds. But Jimmy Nuts is returning, and he's taking on Dylan Bostic, and Kevin Nash will be there. Argos, Pollock will probably be there. This will be the first time that we actually go to the casino for IWC. And the whole family is returning. Because my wife loves Jimmy Nuts. As I told them, I was there. You guys heard this earlier. I'm like, Jimmy Nuts returned. I got a text from my son. I'm pissed. Well, you're the one that decided not to go that week. So, <laughs> he will uh, we'll make the trek down to the casino in Wheeling, West Virginia to see that. Other than that, we have our shtick to go through. I don't know if Chad wants to say any of this, but Pro Printing and Office LLC 814-834-3006. They'll print up anything you need. Uh, Chad just gave me the note that he doesn't want to. Collar and elbow. You can get your hats, hoodies, tees, shirts, anything you need. Uh, again, you hear me push these shirts all the time. They're comfortable. They're they're just not a stiff shirt. And they have a lot of cool stuff from Dusty Roads to retro 90s looks. It, it's awesome. And when you check out, it's OVW and you get 10% off. You can find us on Facebook or Instagram. It's at CanCrusher69. Everything leads back to our website, which is cancrusher69.wixsite.com backslash cancrushers. Keep sending the emails in about how bad we suck. We're okay with that. As long as we're getting emails. One of these times, I'm going to pull one of you guys out and say, Hey, uh, Colin Maines, we don't suck. But we do. Sometimes. Uh, you can email us at cantcrusher69 at gmail.com. We are everywhere! 
that you listen to podcasts. I'm not going to name them all today because that's just the way I am today. I'm in a bit of a mood that I don't want to mention them, but we are in the WrestlePost app. It's an easy app to have on your phone. You can get it from iTunes or Google Play, and it's you can find out where Seth Rollins' parents is going wrestling in Idaho next week. Nonetheless, that's the show. No garbage tip, no Paul, no garbage tip, no beer as well, because it's actually early in the morning when we're recording this. What do you got? Be safe, people. Be responsible. Support indie wrestling. Support indie wrestling. You know, they're the foundation. They're they're what's keeping it going. Right now is an exciting time. I'll stop you for a minute. We won't go through the stick yet. When we were younger and wrestling would come to St. Mary's or Johnsonburg or Dubois or wherever, um, I'm not going to mention some of the names of the wrestling because they're now defunct, but do you think that wrestling had a chance to standing with any indie wrestling now? I mean, I'm not saying when a WWF would come. I'm saying when... XYZ wrestling that was owned out of Pittsburgh or owned out of Philly, not ECW folks, but any of those little indies, do you think they would have survived now to where they were back then? I, I don't think they were on the same level. I, it's a different, I don't, I hate to use the word evolve, um, with it, but you're gonna, but wrestling has, wrestling has changed, evolved, um, some for the good, some for the not so good. Um, I think it would have been extremely tough because now it's people want almost instant satisfaction, glitz, glamour, ooh, ah. And back then it was substance. It was. It, um, that's a great point. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this because we always talk about them anyway. Um, I remember NWA in the mid 80s coming to St. Mary's and put on a he- I mean it, it was a hell of a card it was two out of three falls Midnight Express and Rock and Roll Express uh, Sam Houston was there all the big names were there except for the world the Flair. world champion at the time um, it was substance it was it was in a freaking gym yep you didn't have the you had the music that was it people liked that then now Times, unfortunately, have evolved, have, have evolved um, and it's just changed so much. So I think they'd have an extra, I, can't, I don't want to say that they couldn't survive now, but I think it would be extremely hard and the promotion that would go into it would be expensive. Very expensive for him. Oh, you know the, pub- Ask the Justin publicity. Justin Plummer. Ask Justin Plummer what it is. Probably. Um, you know, I had never. Sorry, Justin. When I say this, I had never heard of IWC until Mark got me into it a little over two years ago. Um, and the first time that I went to it was the Super Indie Tournament where Adam Cole was there. Baby, well, I had seen Adam Cole years before when he was even more of a twig than he is now um and great guy hell of a wrestler everything like that and i wanted to see him um so i went now i love iwc that's all that's all it takes promotion getting the money into it getting the word out of it or out on it you know one person telling another telling another posting stuff on facebook um you know things just get out yeah, and I think that's I think that's where it would be extremely hard for them these days because of the mon- you know money situation and stuff like that. I agree. I agree. All right, guys, uh, a lot going on this weekend. We're all over the place once again. Uh, but make sure if you have time Friday night, make sure you get your ass to Lamont Furnace, Pennsylvania, the Rise Arena, the Stronghold stranglehold arena right down the road from pittsburgh and support stomp out cancer and once again congratulations to ashley ludwin for winning the two tickets from the can crushers and we hope to see you there remember chad just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things it's called a garbage can not a garbage cannot see you next week buddy
See you next week.